these other things obsolete, and I'm leaving the Big Bang Theory. But see, with all of our getting, we are to get understanding, knowledge. And with that knowledge, then it will allow us to walk in truth. Now, we know the DNA, we know how man's physical body is put together. We're now understanding about the brain and the mind. The brain is one organism. The mind is something different. The brain stores the information. The mind or the knowledge puts it together. Now, in religion, we haven't come to too many understanding. Oh, we got all these nuts on television. We've got all these revelations and uh, all this uh, nutty stuff that has nothing to do with what the Bible says. So we see that the rocks are crying out and telling us, yes, there is a God. Doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, all of these learned people are telling us there is a power. Now, we're talking about and have for the last two or three weeks on Luke 24, 49. I send the promise of my Father upon you. Wait and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high, because I will send the promise of my Father. He's not talking about sending the Father. He's talking about sending the promise of my Father. What was promised to our fathers, he said, I will send unto you. Now, promise is a declaration that something will or will not be done. We, we are suspicious people anymore, and rightfully so. We, we really don't expect salespeople to tell us the full truth. And if you look at television anymore, uh, they operate like that we are totally brain dead. They have all these different things, and they're selling us stuff. And, and so we don't expect people to tell us the truth. We, we try to muddle through and find some truth in what we're exposed to. But Jesus said, I'm going to send the promise that which the Father promised our Father. I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you. Now Luke 24, 44, 45. Jesus said all of these things must be fulfilled. Now whenever we look at the world of science and the world of knowledge, we, we see all the changes that have been made and that they're rapidly changing. The little blackberry or blueberry or sparrow, whatever it is you got in your pocket, and your kids play with them all the time. They, they change about every 90 days. They come up with something. We, we have an article in the paper today that our memory has been changed in this short space because of all these electronic gadgets. We, we're, we're no longer able to remember things that we can get off of our little handheld gadgets, that our brain now is not functioning in the same capacity that it was, that man's brain and man's ability to uh, handle that information is changing. But Jesus said what was promised in the beginning must be fulfilled. That which God has promised, he is also able to perform. Now remember we talked to you last week, told you to read the first chapter of the book of Ephesus when you got home. I know one individual, he's not here this morning, but he came to my office and said, I read the entire chapter, I did my homework, I read the entire 
chapter of the book of Ephesus. Now see the book of Revelation, if you read where John on the Isle of Patmos, and he wrote to the churches of Asia that existed in that day. And he said, these things must shortly come to pass. Now we're trying to reinterpret them as some last day catastrophe, but he said, these things must shortly come to pass. Now Ephesus was the capital of the Roman provinces in Asia at that time. Rome was the greatest power, <coughs> governmental power at that time, and uh, these Asian countries were under their domination as well as Israel or Jerusalem was also under that, denom uh, that domination. So Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. Now these were learned people. They were uh, the uh, where we get the Socrates and the Plato's and the, all of the different uh, great Greek historians and all out of them. They were worshiping Diana, a star fell down from heaven. And, I mean, just, just think of all of our great philosophers, Roman and Greek philosophers, that, that, that they worshiped uh, women falling down out of heaven. Diana falling down out of heaven. They, Ephesus was worshiping all of these different gods. Paul wrote a letter to the church at Ephesus and said that in the first three verses of the first chapter of Ephesus, or rather starting at the third verse, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. I'm going to send the promise of the Father unto you. What God promised to the Father, the first promise that God made was to Adam. Adam is the father of all living beings. Eve is the mother. Now they agree with that, that the human family started in the Euphrates Valley over a little bit outside of Baghdad, and that uh, that's where the human family began its journey on the face of the earth. Now it began in a sinful condition that had started off in the presence of God, in a relationship with God. But Adam and Eve sinned. I've heard a lot of people talk about all the different kind of sins, and they tried to find what sin was it. Well, it wasn't an apple and an orange, and it wasn't even a snake. It was disobedience. Yes. God gave commandment to our father Adam and said all of this abundance belongs to you. Amen. Now we're living in a world that is eating up all of the blessings of this earth. It doesn't make a difference whether you believe in global warming or not. We've got polluted air, polluted water, polluted food that our government is coming in now and telling us that we can and can eat certain things and that all of these things that we are exposed to, including our money, our economy, is now polluted to where that it might falter and fail and the Chinese might become the leading financial power of the world. Not only might, they are becoming the leading. And we get upset. You know, we, we, we get upset if somebody said, America is not number one anymore. Well, 